the reason Kamala Harris is not getting into more depth about all of her possible programs, because I think if people find out, they're not going to be happy about it. I hope that Kamala will win in the end. Mm -hmm. What would be the policies that you affect you most that, that drive you to vote for Kamala Harris? Now, I'll be honest. I haven't paid enough attention to know her specific polities. It, it does seem like she's been there for the middle class, which a lot of my family is. So. All right, joining us now with reaction is ESPN host, the one and only Stephen A. Smith. Do you want to get it out of the way now, oh, how hard your life is, Lord. that you have to defend your, the fact that you, you admit that you're friends with me? You want to get that out of the way at the beginning or at the end? No, Just I, ask I, I, it. I, 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 I don't need to get that out of the way. The, the, the public knows that already. You get on my nerves. I don't agree with you 75% of the time, but you're still my... <laughs> I didn't know that. I had no idea, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about it, but... <laughs> Buddy, you know, I feel bad for you half the time with some of the takes you give, but I'm here to help you out anyway. What's going on, Sean? Okay. All right. I, I always say, you say to me, stay in my lane when I talk sports, stay in your lane on politics. However, there, there's something amazing. Putting aside any demographic group, if you are going to attack okay. them, you want them to vote a certain way, and you are going to suggest that they are sexist or misogynistic, if you're going to suggest, like Stacey Abrams did, that African-American men are racist and, and sexist, um, is that a good way to, to, to encourage people to vote the way you'd like them to vote? No, but I, I didn't hear Stacey. I didn't hear Stacey Abrams speaking that way. As a matter of fact, she talked about how black men do vote. Black men do support Kamala Harris. Black men do support a lot of the Democrats and what have you. And she's absolutely right about that. You know, I spoke against uh, President Barack Obama, uh, who I know you don't like that, but I admire and respect this man. I did not like what he had to say at that particular clip that you showed. And I spoke out about it on my show, the Stephen A. Smith show. And I'm unapologetic about that because I know by and large, black men have always supported black women that's a fact that's a point of fact now that doesn't mean that there isn't some misogyny that does exist amongst a few in our community but I think that when we looked at this election this election that's forthcoming and we see Kamala Harris going up against Donald Trump I don't think it's right to point to that as a reason why it's a nip and tuck race and why she isn't receiving the support that she deserves and that is why I spoke out against what he had to say on that particular issue because I was referring Feuding what he was saying. I don't believe that to be the case at all when it comes to her. Yeah, there was that clip where Obama was at a campaign stop and he was um, speaking with several um, black individuals and it kind of came off and he was like berating them and like saying like, I don't understand you guys or you have to do this for whatever reason. And it definitely didn't look good. It was kind of uh, in, in, in the midst of this big campaign slide that Kamala Harris has been on in the recent uh, weeks, whether that was the beginning of it or just sort of part of it in the mix. But that was definitely not a good moment. All right, so let's stay on, on Kamala Harris for a second here. Um, Democrats let's are in a state of panic. All, all the momentum seems to be going to Donald Trump. I told you this would happen in a private conversation mm -hmm. we had. That's you true. were skeptical. I think I was proven right. You know sports I better than am. I do. I think I know politics. I, I, I know. You do. Uh, but here's my question for you. You did call her out early, and you said mm -hmm. she's making a mistake not doing interviews. Now... She does right. these interviews, and I argue to you that the reason she's struggling and she can't, she's like tied up as a, in a pretzel, because she can't express what she has stated publicly, that she wants the Green New Deal, the elimination of the filibuster. She can't say she wants to eliminate private health insurance, as she has said in the past. She's not going to run on what she has stated in the past to decriminalize it. Before. Illegal immigration, free free food, housing, health care, education, sex change operations. and Okay, so before he gets into his propaganda uh, wing of it, the, everything he named in terms of uh, like improving the health care system or getting rid of private health care, there would never be getting rid of private health care in this country. There would just be a mixed market between private and more public uh, options for people, I think is probably the better way to go. Um, I'm not exactly... He talked about the Green New Deal, uh, for one. We've already sort of moved in that position or in that direction, whether or not Hannity likes it or not. That was part of the Inflation Reduction Act. 
uh, sorry, they just took the Green New Deal and basically renamed it to uh, rebrand it in that way. I don't know. I don't like the fact that they, they did that either, but that's the way it is. And then uh, the other one was, what was the third one? Green New Deal, the elimination of the filibuster. She oh. can't say she wants to eliminate. Elimination of the filibuster, that's something that uh, would be extremely popular because that just serves to stop progress and basically stop any singular bill that could potentially potentially make people's lives better from getting through. Um, it's how they've stopped uh, gun legislation. It's how they've stopped voting rights legislation. It's how they've stopped minimum wage increases. It's how they've stopped health care reform. It's how they've stopped so many of the things that would uh, cause progress in this country. And it's part of the reason why Donald Trump is uh, in the popular position that he's in because nothing gets done in Congress and the president never takes a, a stand to get those things done. So those uh, alone are actually would be uh, popular things to do, just not in the framing that Hannity presents. And, and a path to citizenship or banning fracking, banning offshore drilling. So she mm -hmm. has to... Mm -hmm. You know, give us word salads because she won't tell us how she really feels. She's hiding her true beliefs. Well, Donald Trump doesn't do that. Well, first of all, that's well, first of all, that's a very long question. Let's get to it. Number one. Yeah, you talk I'm about what a she's point. doing. Bottom line is this. As, as vice president of the United States, it's not it wasn't her job to lead. She has to go along with the program. You are a support base. You support the person that is in charge who happened to be Joe Biden. That's number one. Number two, I know you're not talking about somebody being lucid and cogent and enunciating their thoughts with clarity and you're bragging about Donald Trump. We can't be watching the same stuff oh, if I am. that's what you're doing. Oh, you ain't going to do that today. You know now, what? Lindsey Graham, hold it. Now, Senator yeah. Lindsey oh, Graham is about today. to come on this show. Let me tell you now, something. that man can articulate I have himself sat very with well. Him. Not Donald Trump now. I have. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about that either. Lind Lindsey Graham is. Uh, is one of the weaseliest politicians that we have out there. I don't know if we want to talk about him in terms of articulation. I have sat with him for hour after hour after hour, topic after topic after topic, and he is so dialed in. Uh, I, 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 he, really? Look. Total and complete propaganda. Go watch the Joe Rogan Experience podcast where it's three hours, and about after an hour, and it devolves into conspiracy theory nonsense and the weave and all this crazy stuff. Total propaganda you know it's funny people try this is like the latest the argument. Press conferences. And meanwhile and meanwhile meanwhile your friends in the democratic party they ignored the obvious significant deep cognitive decline of the president for over four years i said it before the changing the subject deflecting to joe biden that was never part of this discussion 2020 election kamala to this day say oh joe was really cognitively alert mm -hmm. you know that's a crock i know that's a crock what is Everybody she supposed to say Sean? knows it's a crock not Sh donald trump Sean, what is it what what is, hold on hold on hold on what is she supposed to say she's supposed to sit up there and say you know what my president my <laughs> the boss truth. i mean there was how cognitive about, decline about the there. Truth? no you're not no you're you don't, the you truth don't on do your that show? you don't dime out your boss you don't, you don't. I do tell the truth on my show, but guess what? So I said I do. I said I do. What I said, however, you know what is that makes I'm you not going to my boss tell you. if that's my boss. Go Whoa. ahead. Oh, hang on a second. You know what? I have never watched you hold back. You 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 say what I'm you mean. You back. mean what you say. That's my yes. point. She is. But she knew she out. knew he was a cognitive mess, and now she's lying. Oh no, I never noticed it. It's a because crock. Sean, it's a lie. because Sean, what Just you're trying to it's because, a lie. because what people, but because what? And listen, I personally I, listen. I, a year earlier, I was saying there's slippage. There's something that ain't there. He ain't gonna make it to the election. Y'all better get with the program. No. Do something about it. I was on the record about Joe Biden, but I'm not a part but of the Biden administration. And if I was a part of the Biden administration, I wouldn't have told you that. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, she's the candidate <laughs> you now. You got to run against her. Are you yeah. gonna be the show? And, and Hannity acting like he would have done anything different or any Republican would have done anything different. It was their candidate. I mean, like he's acting like the same thing with Donald Trump. We know that there's mental decline with Donald Trump. We know he's a maniac and he's like totally unhinged. And they sit up and pretend like he's this great genius, like this great policy genius. And he's in control of everything. And all the world leaders respect him and all this. Give me a break. John, are you going to beat or are you going to are. Are gonna beat? Gonna, it's, it's a straight are you up. Confident it's straight that up. Trump, the American people. Are you as confident as you were months the ago? The biggest choice are you election confident you in was a lifetime. Months ago? I but see I some slippage. But Stephen A, Stephen A, let me tell you something. Yes. She lied when she said the the uh, the inflation's transitory. They lied repeat. Inflation 
was and is transient. It's it's it spiked globally everywhere during 2022 and 2023, and then it came right down. We're, we're, we've been in this process of it coming down, and now actually it's back basically to levels it was. Wages are still catching up. That's why people still feel the effects of inflation, and a lot of that has to do with Republican policies. Um, but inflation was transitory. Repeatedly, and she said, oh, no, the border is secure, the border is secure. Now, are you all sure, of a sudden, she, are you sure now, you want to make the now, case about somebody lying now, in favor she of never Trump? Changed are you sure positions about that? On she never changed her position on the Green New Deal, on sex change operations, open borders, amnesty, until she became a candidate. You know what that means? She is a typical Fair. politician to just will say whatever needs to be said to win an election. Okay. You get the last word. because I. Oh, my God. Like J.D. Vance and all these people aren't doing the exact same thing everywhere they go. Like, Can like I retort? So much. Can I retort? Let me let me yeah. let me retort. Fair enough. Okay. You didn't even bring up fracking. You didn't even bring up the border. That's absolutely a valid point on your part. What she's doing now is saying, excuse me, I'm open to compromise. I'm willing to work across the aisle. I'm willing to listen and make things happen. Now, you have a lot of people who are going to vote for Trump and they absolutely positively believe he will change Washington. The question is, will it be for better or will it be for worse? The cesspool that we look at as the nation's capital, if you got him back in office yeah. and he's on a revenge tour and he's not focused on doing what it takes to lead the country where will that lead the country you're not bringing that part up so again we might not like something on the left we might not like something on the right these are the two candidates that we've got to work with and when you bring up issues in terms of character or in terms of being truthful or whatever let me tell you something right now right. you can bring a whole bunch of republicans and i'll be cool with it you can't you know bring up trump to make a case against somebody else run. using those arguments you can't do that Look, you know what? I'm I'm predicting that privately you're going to vote for Trump. Ah, give me a break. Oh, then never, never. <laughs> and I told you I'm on the record. I'd have voted almost for any Republican but him. I'm okay. Uh, uh, Nikki okay. Haley, Chris right, Christie. Right, I would have voted right. for them. I'm not Somebody, trying to set not you him. Off. I got to go. Him. I love you, Stephen A. God bless you. And I don't have to defend easy, my bro. relationship yeah. with you. you. All right. We'll you see don't. you later. You don't. All right, with early but voting under. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey. <laughs> okay. Oh, Lordy. Whoa. So there you have it, Stephen A. Smith. Kind of nice to hear a voice outside of politics bringing uh, the heat to Sean Hannity. Um, kind of surprised that they're friends, but I guess uh, uh, Stephen A. Smith is a fiscal conservative, it seems. He would have put his support behind Nikki Haley. Um, even though he probably does, under, does not understand the implications of the rest of that agenda being uh, very much similar to that of Donald Trump's, just without the noise and the um, um, un unpredictability, let's say. So a uh, fairly decent job by Stephen A. Smith going in there and handling Sean Hannity. Um, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one.